Welcome to On the Issues. I'm Phoenix City Councilman Sal, the CCO from Phoenix City Council District 6, and we have a spectacular program for you today. We have one of my favorite places in the entire city of Phoenix. It's called the Schemer Center. It's owned by the city of Phoenix, but it's run by individuals in the private sector. It's one of the best, if not the best, examples of the private sector, public sector working together to bring it a fascinating place to the city of Phoenix. It's one of my favorite places because it's one of the oldest homes in Arcadia and actually one of the oldest homes in the city of Phoenix. It was originally built in 1919 and I've got Betty Wagner with me today who is one of the individuals that's real involved in making sure that it stays the way it is right now, preserving the historic part of our city and also involved in so many of the, the center's activities that are involved here. We're going to end up taking a walk around, Betty, Great. but at the same time, if you could tell us just a little bit about the history of the Schemer Center and its relationship with the city of Phoenix, one of the oldest homes. It, I think you said it's the oldest home in the city of Phoenix. It is in this, uh, at least in this Arcadia neighborhood. For oh, sure. in Arcadia. Yep. That's it. And from 1919, which is amazing to think that we are still here after maybe two or three remodels, but not a tremendous amount. And the building has just continued to thrive and now functioning as the Art Center, which we're in our 30th year. So it's very exciting to have that be our anniversary year this year. And um, it is operated as an art center and exhibition, classes, events, information and training for artists as well. So it's been an incredible facility and a, a great place to take classes. It's safe, it's small, it's warm, it's comfortable, not intimidating. Mm -hmm. People love to take classes here. Well, I noticed that we have a, a lot of individuals here today mm -hmm. already we taking do. classes. So almost mm -hmm. on a daily basis, you have classes that are attended and run here at the Schemer Center. That's correct. And Sakama, which is the nonprofit portion. Tell us what is, Sakama is. Sure. The, that What you mentioned, the mm -hmm. public-private partnership, um, developed and now is uh, has been in place since I think 85 mm -hmm. 1985 and with that it's evolved over the years the city uh, years ago managed that but 10 years ago that partnership was um, solidified even more and that Sakama took over the day-to-day -day operations of the center from a funding standpoint as well as servicing and supporting all of the classes and things that go on. So literally, the board, which is Sakama, a nonprofit organization, uh, a group of volunteers. Mm -hmm. And we've been involved, myself, I've been involved over 17 years, as many of the other board members have been as well. But um, we work together uh, with the staff mm -hmm. to be able to bring the best, the best of the best uh, to the area. You know, a lot of people still believe that you're funded by the city of Phoenix. You I get <laughs> no money from the city of Phoenix. Mm -hmm. Actually, what you do is you, the voluntary work that you do is you take over an asset that the city of Phoenix has mm -hmm. and you're running it and you're paying for it. And you're, you know, literally all these expenses are coming out of the volunteers. Correct. And from the people who support the center, mm -hmm. either in donations, membership, classes, or different fundraisers that they've generated as well for mm -hmm. the center. And I want to make sure that our viewing audience understands this. This is just mm -hmm. like a park. It's no different than anything else that we do at the City of Phoenix. We own it, but we have volunteers who run it, they pay for it, the individuals who are part of this pay for it. Correct. And there are no other taxpayer dollars that go into this. No. And yeah. sometimes that's a challenge when we go out to fundraise. So yeah. the clarity of that is really helpful. And you got a great opportunity right mm -hmm. now, right here in front of this camera, you know, to let people know that you know, there's always an opportunity for people to raise money for you. You're right. willing to take any donation. Great. And you also want people to know where you're at. Right. We are you know, a diamond, kind of a little gem within Arcadia. Mm -hmm. And that 5005 East Camelback, that's where we are. Mm -hmm. And it is just a beautiful spot to sit. But we are always um, on the lookout for projects, ways to generate revenue, interest. Um, our membership is growing. The uh, instructors who are here involved in many different things that help support the center. And exhibitions, as well as Sunday at Schemer is coming up, mm -hmm. which is our number one fundraiser for the year. Mm -hmm. And that is held on every uh, the first Sunday of every November. And it is November 1st. It's an all-day festival. We're going to have over 40 booths 
here, artist booths selling their materials. Families, kids, everybody Families, comes kids, out to this Families, kids, everybody thing. comes. We have mm. music, we have performances, we have silent auction, and a whole area just for kids to be able to generate their own artwork, which they'll get to take home, which is fabulous. Which is really neat. I mean, my, I've got two girls, two twins, and they love art. And this is just a fantastic place for anybody to bring their children. Just bring your kids here because it's a great place for them to experience the experience of having you know art around them at all times. Mm -hmm. But it's also a very family event where you've got food, you've got people here. It just it, it's just an spectacular event, and I want to make sure that the public understands on November first, between ten and five, right? And you're right on the southeast corner of Arcadia Drive and Camelback, 5005 East Camelback. I want to make sure that the viewing yep. audience knows this, mm -hmm. where you're at on November 1st to be here. But they can come here any other time, too. Oh, absolutely. It's, we're open um, regularly Tuesday through Saturday, and um, we're open from 10 to 3 during the week, Tuesday through Friday, and then till noon and so on Saturday. Let's do this. Let's go take a walk sure. around the ground so that the public can see the beauty that we have here, the historic uh, preservation that's occurred here since the 1919, mm -hmm. and that the fact that the home has barely changed since that time. We're right outside the Schemer Center, which is located right on uh, Arcadia Drive in Camelback, 5005 East Camelback. And you can take a look at the beauty of the, the building that we have out here, the historic nature that we have in Arcadia, in our jewel. Uh, it is one of the best hidden secrets that we have. And I don't think it's that well hidden because thousands <laughs> of people come here every year mm -hmm. and they're able to enjoy this, Betty. Mm -hmm. I'm here again with Betty Wagner. We just walked outside. If you could, I want to show some of the artwork that we have, just some of the artwork that all this is for sale. Mm -hmm. uh, artists come out here and they put their artwork for consignment or they put it here for a short period of time, but they do sell it. And it's an opportunity for artists to be able to bring their works here too, not only for the public to come in and do art, but for artists to come here. So tell us a little bit about what we're seeing here. And then of particular importance, I'd like to have you tell us a little bit about the Orange Grove that you have over here. Okay, sure. Well, the building is, as you said, just a gem. And the artwork that we have surrounding the facility outside is um, all pieces that are by sculptors from uh, Arizona. Mm -hmm. And the focus has always been on Arizona artists mm -hmm. here at Schemer and an opportunity for them to exhibit in places where uh, they might not otherwise be able to do that. So we really provide that kind of environment. So the artwork that you see has been um, located here as a part of um, our sculpture tour and garden. So we have a walk and uh, things noted so that people can learn more about the different artists. And the totems are just so much fun and color and have been uh, a great uh, visual asset to the site. And they are for sale. Mm -hmm. And um, actually, Schemer does benefit when some of those people, pieces are sold. So it's a plus. Um, because the artist has donated a portion of that to the center as well. So mm -hmm. it's a great way for revenue is for us. And then tell us about the orange grove that you have back here because that, that's another beauty. It is. And of course, in 1919 and then the years that followed, all of Arcadia was citrus. Mm -hmm. right? So it really is the foundation for the neighborhood. And over the years, those trees have an age, have a life, and they have started to pass on. Mm -hmm. So we have really made it a focus to try, as in cooperation, uh, in collaboration with the city, to bring some of those trees back to the area. And we also had a young man uh, who was part of his Eagle Scout project to donate um, and really participated in getting a lot of these trees in place again. Mm -hmm. So between the city and some donations from the neighborhood, some of those trees are really starting to come back so that we'll have a grove again. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the other places we are outside is to show how historic this is, is all you need to do is take a look at Camelback Mountain behind us and some of the artwork. But one of the things, Betty, is that this is one of the original Phoenix Point of Prides where we had an original 25. Mm -hmm. Now we have 33, but this is one of the originals. Tell us a little bit about that. It is. It was number 23, I think, when it was first initiated here. 
and it was voted on uh, amongst the entire valley. So it's so exciting that w that was done so long ago and still we continue to thrive here and is still a very special place and very something to be proud of for the valley and well, the city. It's really hard to be one of the point of pride. So yeah. let's think about it. Yeah. We're a large city. It's big. Yeah, we're <laughs> one and a half million people. Yeah. And to be one of 25 and to mm -hmm. be one of the original 23, mm -hmm. that tells you a lot. It tells you that you know people saw this, they saw the value in it, and they saw how important it was to the city. And how special yeah. it is, indeed. So one of the things I really want to make sure that the public really understands is the historical importance of the building and of the property and the fact that it was preserved for so many years that because of the partnership that the city of phoenix was able to purchase the building and the land then it was turned over to a volunteer organization tell us more about your organization what you do and how much work okay. each of you citizens i mean how many i mean that's just uh, people don't realize how much work people do to make things better for everybody else and your angels <laughs> and so you know I, I think that the public needs to know how hard mm -hmm. it is how much work you put and it's a labor of love that you put into this for sure mm -hmm. well the Schemer family actually purchased this property and donated it to the city and when they donated it the city agreed to add um, and take care and support the building to manage that piece of it so that was the huge initial partnership that began and from there, the nonprofit was formed to help get community participation into the center, as well as help organize and manage as it moves forward. So with, with that, each time there's a board, there's 12, typically 12 to 14 board members, all volunteers, and um, we do, I'm sure, log a considerable amount of hours. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know at one point when I was president and it was for two years, I felt like it was a full-time job. <laughs> yeah, well, it is a full-time <laughs> job. it really is. Because it's a full-time love, too. Right. And, yeah. But I wouldn't have it any other way. It's mm -hmm. just a tremendous place. And what it provides for people, young people, especially for children, is such an incredibly creative environment to learn about the arts. Mm -hmm. And that's what touched me and why I ended up getting involved, because my son mm -hmm. took classes here, and I've been here ever since, Well, as many of the members and the board members have been. One of the things that right now we see an open area, on November 1st, we're going <laughs> to encourage people to come here because that's yep. a way for you to raise money. Yep. But it's also a way for you to expose the center to the entire public that yes. may not have an opportunity to be here. Mm -hmm. But on November 1st, between the hours of 10 and 5, we're going to have people all over the place. This will here. be full of artists uh -huh. here and we'll have demonstrations in the orchard. The food trucks will be in the back part the back of the orchard. Area. And the, uh, classes and some of the demonstration as well as the students act the young people mm -hmm. their activities will be out here as well where the kids will be working on different kind of artist projects and one of the other things you'll see people will ride their bikes out here yes we get you know? a lot of neighborhood turnout right on that day especially well you do and you get mm -hmm. people coming in with their bikes they walk over here it's a real big community event and i don't think people realize how beautiful it is and mm -hmm. how great it is for children to be exposed to that type of art like one of the things in my life, I never had it. My, my, both my parents came over from Italy, mm -hmm. you know, so we grew up really poor, so we never had art in our lives. And, but once I started getting exposed to it in fifth grade, <laughs> I know it sounds strange, but I remember but then, that. Yeah. And it was just something that I realized how important it is for people. So my wife and I would do a really, you know, we're very uh, persistent in making sure our children are exposed to art. They see that the beauty that this world has for them and they're able to express it. So this has been a great place for our community, for the artists to be able to show their works, mm -hmm. but just as importantly for the kids to come in here and be exposed to something that they may never have an opportunity to get exposed that's, to. That's so right, you because know? that whole training for art is still training a creative thinker, and that's really what that's about, and yeah. that can apply to every aspect of your life. Well, it is. So. You, creativity works. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things that's made this country great. Yep. You know, it's so funny is you don't have to know anything about art, because I don't. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm one of those guys, but you do appreciate it, and you do understand how much work it took for someone to put that together, and they had to think that through, and what they had to come up with. Mm -hmm. You know, and the fact that you know, if you look at it, you know, art could be the beauty of the trees, the, the, the fact that you've got this immense, this beautiful orange grove here, 
the way this home's been preserved. That's all art too. It's, it's all, all creativity. It. Mm -hmm. So I want to thank you for everything that you do, Betty. Thank You've you. just been a fantastic work for you know, the city of Phoenix. You just do so much for us. And I think it's just a great time too for the public to understand what we have here at the Schemer Center. 5005 East Campbellback. <laughs> And the event's going to be on November 1st between the hours of 10 and 10 and 1 o'clock. 10 to 5. To 10 to 5, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. 10 and 5 on November 1st. Correct. And please come out, bring your family, do what you have to do to get out here because this place is going to be covered with artwork. Even if you don't know anything about art, like I'm one of those guys, it's a great experience for your family. It's a great experience for your children. It's a great experience for the city of Phoenix just to see one of our greatest jewels that we have here. I'm Phoenix City Councilman Sal DeCicio, and thank you for being on the issues. And Betty, thank you so much for everything that you do. Pleasure.